for the Bassmaster Open was an outstanding experience. I love this fishery, although I found it to be extraordinarily tough. And it wasn't just me, it was pretty much everybody found it to be a tougher bite than anticipated. The Mississippi River had been in flood conditions for months, literally forever. It's been an odd and tough year on that stretch of the river, but to make things a little more complicated, the water level dropped over three feet during the week I was there. Throughout practice, I had a difficult time establishing a good frog bite, except for one spot, and that was close to pool nine, which was great because my best fish I had found were in pool nine. So that was gonna be my my goal in the tournament was to exploit the fish I would found in pool nine, which I didn't think were all that big, but definitely keepers, and I thought a limit was going to be a, an accomplishment in itself, and then having a chance to upgrade throughout the tournament. Could not wait to get day one going. I was boat 153 out of 198 professionals. That meant I was going to get an extra long day of fishing. I didn't have to get way in and or check in until 3.45 that afternoon. So running down the pool nine, plenty of time to do it. And a good thing, because talk about a pucker up moment, was the incredible fog, dense fog that I had to drive through to get down to pool nine. After locking through pool nine, which was kind of cool as it was my first experience doing it, ran to my spot. You can kind of take a look around and see what kind of deal I was fishing. It was current and rip rap around those pillars. Didn't take any time at all to start laying it down on those smallmouth and largemouth bass. Actually, it's mostly largemouth. Mostly, most of my damage was done on a crankbait, a Bandit 200 series. I was mostly grinding that bait off the rocks. Caught several on a tube as well. And a couple on the Loch Ness Lures Monkey Punch. That's what I like to do. I like to punch fish when I can with that bait. But after about two and a half hours of fishing and a dozen or more keepers, I was only sitting around nine pounds. So it was time for me to move, lock back up in the pool eight and go chase those uh, 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 fish I had found, or frog and fish, I'm gonna call them frog and fish. Found them in some slop the day before. I physically saw them, I knew they were there. And almost right away, I called. Caught one and called. Unfortunately, it was only by a few ounces. And then I went almost two and a half hours there catching a couple of small ones and some pike and some missed blow ups and hadn't called again. So at the end of the tournament, ran up towards the ramp and made a big call on smallmouth. I didn't get on film, but the biggest fish of the tournament is actually about two and a half pound smallmouth bass that I caught on a crankbait too. Got me excited. I weighed 10 pounds, 13 ounces, which put me in 59th place, but only 10 ounces shy of being in the money, which frankly I didn't feel was too bad for being my first time on this body of water against this incredibly talented field. Most telling though to me, something I missed but also made me excited, was Jim Wheeler. Jim Wheeler, you've seen him on our YouTube channel, the hottest bass angler in the whole northern Indiana, southern Michigan area, without question. He was fishing the same area, and his co-angler with him, fishing the same stuff I was that day, caught a three and a half and three pounder there, which told me I'm talking about that starting spot in pool nine where I only had nine pounds. It told me, hey, there are in fact some bigger fish there. So day two, I was gonna go get them. Talk about being jacked up for day two. I was ready to go. Ran down to pool nine to go start in the same area where I'd caught a quick limit on day one. Drove through some really hairy fog again. But what I found as soon as I got there was the water level had dropped even more. I'm telling you the water had dropped by over three feet since I had fished it in practice. That was okay, but what I found was a much slower bite. Only a couple small ones on a crankbait. And 
then the tube bike really picked up. Now, I've done so many opens in the past, uh, 11 I believe, and I have only think of one time where my co-angler weighed more weight than I did. Never have I thought, of, can think of a time a co-angler caught more than I did, but my co-angler kicked my booty. I'm telling you, he smacked me hard. Now, I caught fish. I caught plenty of fish, caught my limit, mostly with a stupid tube. Show you a stupid tube in a few moments. I said stupid tube. I don't mean it to be in a condescending way, but the rigging how this tube is actually known and called the stupid tube. Terry McWilliams out of Indianapolis, Indiana made it famous. So here's how you rig it. Take a standard jig head and tube. I'm gonna be gross here. Get that wet. I'll stick my weight, excuse me, my hook in first. Comes out like this. Okay, now I gotta reverse it. Flip it around. Bring the eyelet out here, and now I'm going to basically text rate. Just like that. And that's what you call a stupid tube rig. Well, my call anchor had figured out ahead of me, actually, was that the best deal was to throw this stupid tube and let it drift, literally drift. It's the most boring presentation in the world. You cast it out there and you, you watch your line come back towards you, and it's drifted. But it also, this rig prevents it from getting snagged up in the rocks which I dealt with until I finally switched around to Stupid Tube. The challenge of a Stupid Tube is that you have to have a much stronger hook set than what I typically use on a tube, which is an exposed hook. But the heartbreaker, the heartbreak deal, I was losing one over three pounds, probably about three and a half pounds, right at the boat. Hit it. Should be bigger, it was out deeper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. That was a three plus. I... Played it like a fool. I thought it was a smaller fish. I was going to swing it in a boat like everything else. It wasn't until he had jumped out of the water, three feet from me, shaking his head violently, and I'm pulling on it with my 10 pound fluorocarbon that he snapped my line. That was a $3,000 fish. As a result, I ended up weighing 10 pounds, eight ounces on the day. Not moving up or down, staying in 59th place. They only paid back top 40. I ended up missing the uh, money by about a pound and a half. I weighed a 14 and a half inch fish, 14 and a half incher, and I lost when it was three and a half pounds that I should have stupid move with me. My lessons of the Mississippi River are this. Besides looking sexy as all can get out in my five and eight uh, graphics apparel jersey, thank you five and eight, What's this? I came in a unique time in the Mississippi River. Water was falling big time. The frog bite, which is, they'll say, world famous. Frog fishing out there really struggled because of that, because that water falling down. Now, the things that stabilize over there, the frog bite probably picks up. But as that was happening, the water's dropping, the current's actually slowing down. What would have been best for me is to spend more time on rip rap and with current on it or wing dams with current going over it. I saw throughout the tournament and myself, especially at the end of the tournament each day, going and fishing that kind of stuff and catching smallmouth bass. I would have been better served doing that, reading those conditions, instead of spending most of my time practice looking for frog fish. Thank you for watching and tuning in. Please subscribe, like this channel. If you're a fan of fishing, you're gonna love the hunter of fish. Don't we